Global coronavirus case has surpassed 19 million in battle on new variant. And Democrats in Congress kick off efforts to drive Trump from office. Welcome back. Cairo hosted on Monday a meeting of the foreign ministers of the four-party international committee for the Middle East peace process. The meeting brought together foreign ministers of Egypt, Jordan, Germany and France with the aim of reviving the Middle East peace process. Ahead of the meeting, Foreign Minister Sameh Shoukri received Jordanian Foreign Minister Ayman Safadi, French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian, and German Foreign Minister Ecomas. The four foreign ministers held a joint press conference after the talks. Speaking during the press conference, Shukri reaffirmed Egypt's full commitment to achieving peace in the Middle East. Shukri called for overcoming the stalemate in the peace process. He said that the meeting stressed the committee's common views on achieving Middle East peace. For his part, Safadi said that the Palestinian cause should be a regional and international priority. He said that the Israeli settlement activities undermine peace efforts. He noted that there are major challenges facing efforts to reach a peace settlement. Meanwhile, Laudrion said that the committee is discussing ways to reach a permanent peace settlement. Speaking during the press conference, Ekoma said that the committee will hold talks with the two sides and international partners to revive the peace efforts. He noted that the Palestinian-Israeli conflict has a negative effect on other regional conflicts. The German foreign minister said that reviving peace talks will give the Palestinians the chance for self-determination. He added that they will offer new incentives to resume the peace talks. <clears throat> And for more on the four-way meeting, we are uh, joined over the phone by His Excellency Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant uh, Foreign Minister. Good day to you, Mr. Ambassador. Good day. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much, Ambassador Bayoumi. Uh, as a, a veteran diplomat, what is the importance of the timing of holding this uh, meeting? Very important. We, we are trying to move this very difficult uh, question and the case of the Palestinian question, it is the only occupied land in the whole world nowadays. The, the, the period of imperialism has finished everywhere, in South Africa, in Africa, in Asia, but still we have some countries who are still, or one country who is still occupying our dear Palestinian uh, territories. And this is against the international law, against the resolutions of the United Nations. But I wonder if it is against the, the agreements signed by Israel itself, whether in Washington or Egypt or with Jordan or with the Palestinians themselves, the Oslo Agreement, the famous Oslo Agreement. Mm -hmm. Now Israel is not recognizing its own signature. It's not honoring its own signature. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a, a rightist uh, government. The problem not only with the rightist government, the problem that we have a, a very uh, a reactionary uh, parties in Israel who are with these ideas of occupying more and more land. And uh, uh, the, the, the dear friends of Israel are not with this uh, policy of Israel because the only... Uh, uh, security for Israel will be recognized and will be maintained when Israel uh, uh, recognizes the Palestinian uh, uh, state and the two-state uh, solution. Otherwise, what are they seeking for? And uh, also, we are advising Israelis as uh, good advisors that what is the future of Israel in 20 years to come with uh, uh, this uh, policy which makes all the neighbors hate them and uh, the country can continue like that by making enemies all over its borders. So this uh, meeting is very important in order to give a message to the Palestinian people and the Palestinian authorities that we are there, we shall continue trying uh, our peaceful 
uh, <coughs> efforts in order to bring back the Palestinian question on the negotiation table. Mm. Another message is for the Israeli uh, government in order to uh, maintain uh, 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 and recognize its own signature on the agreements with the Palestinians and, and with the Arabs. Mm. And we have a few, few days ago a very good uh, movement from the Arab of the Gulf towards Israel in order to encourage Israel that we shall recognize Israel and treat it as a, a recognized state if they so solve the Palestinian problem. Mm -hmm. We have a, 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 another problem among us because we have also the question among the Palestinians that we have the division between Fatah on one side and Hamas on the other side. And this has to be stopped and we have to come to reason in order to have one vote for <coughs> the Palestinian question. Yes, Ambassador Bayoumi, uh, the German Foreign Minister, said that uh, new incentives will be offered to encourage the resumption of the peace talks. Uh, in your own opinion, and briefly, what uh, kind of incentives do you expect? Uh, don't, don't forget that the European Union is the main trade partner for Israel. And mm. he is our main trade partner also. <coughs> and they are helping the development in the whole Arab world and in Palestine, uh, the European Union is a very good donor for, for the Palestinian question. So he can use this and that trade, not aid, and more and more cooperation in the sense of uh, economy and economic relations in order to make the, the uh, daily life of a Palestinian or an Israeli citizen much better. So the choice of peace will be recognized there. I hope uh, Europe really is, a, uh, is able to do that, and they are really a good partner in our peace process. Yes. Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for being with us here in this edition of Panorama News. And uh, moving on with our news, the House of Representatives holds the opening session on Tuesday. During the session, the Parliament uh, reviews the decisions of the National Election Authority and the President's decision to appoint 28 members of Parliament. After this, the MPs take the constitutional oath and elect the House Speaker and his two deputies. The inaugural session convenes on Tuesday after President Abdel Fattah Sisi issued a decree on Thursday asking the new House of Representatives to convene on the 12th of January. The five-year term of Egypt's outgoing House of Representatives concluded on the 9th of January. Egypt's parliamentary elections were held from the 24th of October to the 8th of December. Still with the local scene, Egypt reported 993 new coronavirus infections on Sunday, bringing the total number of cases to 149,792 people since the outbreak hit the country in mid-February. The health ministry also reported 55 new deaths, bringing the total number of fatalities to 8,197. The ministry added that the number of patients who recovered and were discharged from hospitals rose to 118,900 people. On the global front, the number of coronavirus infections recorded across the world passed the 90 million mark on Monday. Mexico, France and Russia confirmed the presence of the new variant first found in Britain, while China's daily tally of cases reached its highest in more than five months.